Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hard Nine Podcast. Today, as it stands, is April the 17th, 2024. The Cardinals, as we speak, are coming off a loss, but a series win against the A's. I don't know if we can call still call them the Oakland A's or whatever, but they also sit 9-10, and 10, a game under 500. The good thing is they're only three games out of first. The other good thing is it's April 17th, and nobody really gives a shit. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know, man. It's there's not playing fun baseball anymore. Like they were, I thought, for the first couple of weeks. I, I don't know. There's a lot to get into. A lot of there's a lot of positives. There's a lot of negatives. There's a lot of in betweens. Most of it, I don't know. It's April seventeenth, so who really knows anything right now? But I mean, nine and ten. I'd say they've played like a nine and ten baseball team so far. Uh, I would agree with that. Coming off uh, losing two of three in Arizona where uh, I did predict that they would win two of three. So that was my – I was wrong there. Just so you know, had they gone into Oakland and had we done it before the Oakland series, I also would have predicted two of three. So I got that one right. That's what we're going to say. Um, but they could have won two games in Arizona easily. What Did you tell me today nine of their last ten games they scored le- three or less runs? Uh, this offense right now – of their sits, Twelve of their 19 games. And please understand I, it's 19 games, but that at this point is an eighth of the season essentially is what we're looking at. Um, and right now they are 24th in OPS, 24th in average, 29th in home runs and 24th in runs scored in major league baseball. Uh, this yeah. whole, I I'm getting to the point. This is the first question I want to start with, because we can always talk about the series and we can talk about everything, but I think we have to start with the offense. And here's my question to you. When does, oh, this offense is going to be great. Turn into maybe this offense isn't that great because we saw it last year. We saw hey, we saw glimpses, but you can't be great and have just glimpses. I mean, you can't score against the A's, the Diamondbacks, and others nine out of ten games, three or less runs. And it, it just cannot continue to happen. Uh, it, it just can't. So when do we start thinking, this is who they are? I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, it's not even after the first month. You know, like, every team is going to have bad months, right? Like, your, if your worst month is – Whatever nine and ten is on pace to be, whether that's like eighteen and nineteen, that that's not even. There's more days in them. There's not enough days in a month for that. But whatever, if the, whatever nine and ten extrapol- extrapolates out to for an entire month, more te- a lot of teams are gonna have worse months than that. The Cardinals probably will. So I I don't know the answer to your question. Like if they're really bad offensively this month, but they're really good the rest of the year, you know, then they are a good offense. But the reality is right now I'm concerned. Like it's concerning. Um, you know, we're 19 games in. That's not a small sample size anymore. Like 20 games, like at some point, when do we stop saying small sample size? It's almost 20 right. games figured out. Like that's you can't have 20 games where you're just like, oh, small sample size. Good news, they've won nine games. So, like their offense has been bad, I would say, just straight up bad. And they've won nine games. Um, there's been a lot of positives, I think, but the guy, the two guys that are concerning to me right now are Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Gorman. Um, I'm gonna I'm going to throw Jordan Walker in there as well because yeah. his at bats look. I know that everybody wants to sugarcoat at times. I also understand that I am not a big league hitting coach. I don't even try to play one. So, but his at bats at times look minor league at best. At best. Yeah. At, at Not just at times, majority of at bats are bad. Yeah. And it's not just him. Like, it's like there's some people where I'm just like, what's the approach? Like today he was in against TJ McFarland. First pitch was a sinker uh, away. He's trying to get rid of ground ball, obviously. Next pitch, he hangs him a breaking ball, and he takes it. That's the pitch to hit right there. I've seen TJ McFarlane throw a lot of hanging breaking balls. Most people hit him. And then the next pitch is another sinker low and away, and he grabs that to the shortstop. Like, what is your what is your approach? Here's the thing. Why are you pulling that pitch? Like, why? why? You saw the first pitch, what he's trying to do to you. He just showed you. He's going to continue to throw it there. You, why are you not trying to hit the ball the other way? Like, what, what, why is this happening? And it's Paul Goldschmidt, same way. He's swinging under breaking balls now. Like, I, I don't understand. And I'm not blaming the hitting coach. Because, like, Turner Ward all, can do all he wants to say, Jordan, hey, you got to get off the ground. We've talked about this. This is how you do it. You got to hit the ball the other way. He can't make Jordan Walker actually do it. And it's up to these guys at this point. Like, these guys, yeah, Jordan Walker, Gorman, they're young guys. But I'm sorry, dude. You're in your second year, third year for Gorman. Figure it out. Like it's there's no longer this oh they're young I don't care anymore dude figure it out you're in the major leagues this is your second year Mason Wins figured it out boy that guy looks amazing and it yeah, only took him a couple months and here's the thing with Jordan Walker that's frustrating to me 
He figured it out last year, okay? We saw the second half when he came back up. He was great for the rest of the year, like over 20% above league average for the rest of the year after coming back from AAA. How do these guys continue to revert back into who they were? Like, it keeps it's happening with Gorman, too. He's now chasing, not only is he late on high fastballs, he's chasing breaking balls low one again. That he Man, hasn't he done is, since his first year. He's living on his front foot, too, from every swing I've seen. Like, he is he's trying living. To it's it's bad. And I, and I don't know, like, you're right, like, Everybody wanted to blame John Mabry when he was here. Everybody wanted to blame Jeff Albert when he was here. Now everybody's going to want to blame Turner Ward. At one point, do we just start to say, maybe the guys that we have in this lineup aren't very good. Like, and question. they haven't, I mean, I, and I hate to say that it's a month in. So it's like, okay, pull in the reins. I, yeah, you can't you, say they're not I, good, but... I will reassess at the end of May. Like that's when I will really start figuring well, out what be the team then. is. But at some point, right. We can't keep going like this. That's what I was going to say. I'll, until the end of May. Can I ask you a question? Who's the Dodgers and the Braves heading coach? No clue. Exactly. Yeah, I Nobody agree. Guess I agree. who doesn't care about their hitting coach? The Braves and the Dodgers fans. You know, the only people, hit. first of all, the only people who care about a hitting coach are people who don't understand the game of baseball. And I'm not trying to be rude there, but it is so true. They, these guys are professional hitters. They got to where they were. You could have put me or you in there, right, as, as the hitting coach, and they still should perform. They are there to to put uh, help with little tweaks here and there. They're not going to planning. turn them. That's it. And game planning. Here's what we're looking at, fellas. And you know that Turner Ward is doing that with every game because every hitting coach does that with every game. So he, you keep yeah. wanting to run out the, the batting coaches because you honestly have no clue what they even do and you don't understand it. So you want to blame somebody. It's also like, yeah, hitting coaches should help people with hitting, obviously. But also, like, Turner Ward's kind of been a player appointed hitting coach. He's Paul Goldsmith's guy. So even then, like that's on Goldie. Then, like, well, he was in I, LA, wasn't he? Hold on, wasn't Turner Ward in LA? He was in Arizona with Goldie for a while. Okay. I don't know I if, he, where he was after that. But for some reason, I thought he ended up in LA for. I could be. He might have been. I don't know. I, I just that know could be wrong. That at the beginning of Goldie's career, he was with Goldie. Yeah, in, yeah. Arizona. So I, I don't know. I think let's just get into this. Paul Goldschmidt, it's it's concerning at this point. Slow start, not slow start. He hasn't hit an extra base hit since the first game of the season. Yep. I don't care if you are in a slump. I don't care if it's just a slow start and he's going to be good the rest of the year. If you are Paul Goldschmidt, you cannot go a 19-game stretch with one extra base hit in the entire season. You can't do it. I that agree. is, like, surprisingly bad. Like, you'll luck into a bloop double. You're like, you know what I mean? You cannot do that. I'm sorry. And I know Goldie's not trying to do it, and I'm sure he's working his ass off. But like your offense is not going to be able to go if your number two hitter is striking out whatever percent of the time he is right now. It seems like it's forty percent or higher, and not hitting for any power at all, like at all. Well, another problem that I have, and I don't, I, I assume that this lies on Ali, and I'll let you address this. And it was our concern when they sent Pajes down and they kept Victor Scott up. And I addressed this on Twitter, and I think there were a couple of people who completely did not understand what was being said, and that's okay. Like, it's social media. It's sometimes hard to understand what, what the intent is here. But Herrera set two or three games this weekend. Um, no, he played two. The, oh, did he play two? Okay. And then sat one or two in Arizona, correct? Two. Yeah. So four of the last six. He's Or four of the – whatever. Three. three of the last six. He is fourth on the team in OPS. Like mm – -hmm. Another big hit today, too. There's no reason, like, I'm sorry, at some point, you need to have your big guys. You have four guys over 800 OPS right now where we sit. That's Contreras, Wynn, Newbar, them. and Herrera. Oh, oh I'm okay. sorry. I would have guessed that's what I would have guessed. Too. And then Donovan, close, is, right? Donovan is fifth at 766, and then Nolan's at 724, and then it is a mass 100-point drop-off to Gorman. Like, I'm sorry, but you have to find a way to keep Herrera and Contreras in the lineup as often as possible. I'm not saying every night, because every both night. those guys are catchers. Well, every night. Yeah, I mean, you could, but I can also understand getting them off their feet for a getaway they're game gonna have, or whatever. Yeah, they're going to have off days every once in a while, but I yeah. mean, like, five times a week. Agreed. You need to be in the lineup. Like, Agreed. And it should be like a normal off day, right? Like, people are going to need off days, obviously, but that but, should be the extent of it at this point. But it's not Lars going to Lupar, happen. Hold on. Hold Lars Lupar needs to be in center field. Okay, but it's not going to happen. They're, they have yet to show any tendency to do that. Siani played center field today, right? Yeah, you. Yeah, Victor Scott sat the last two days. I would be shocked if he's on this roster on Friday. I think he'll be down in the minor leagues. Um, I'm sorry, you guys, but you're scoring three runs a game. Get rid of this. Well, we need a little bit better defense in center field. How many runs has Michael Ciani saved you in center field in the last two days? No clue. Zero. <laughs> Zero runs. How many runs has he produced for you on the field? Probably negative. If that's even possible. He can't last hit week, the ball. 
Remember, we said he had a seven something OPS. He's down to three hundred right now. Yeah, because he had one triple. Like he, he, he's like, and him and Victor both. And Victor obviously prospect different scenario here. Um, and he'll figure it out. He'll go into the minor leagues. He'll come back up, but he'll be a better hitter whenever that happens later in the year. However, Michael Ciani is legitimately the most automatic out I've ever seen on a major league baseball field. Not to hate on him, but he is out every time he comes up. Every time he has one hit. You cannot me, have a guy that cannot even like it's different if it's like someone slumping. You can't have a guy in your lineup at all if you know he's getting out. We know today. Mark Hotze made one of the dumbest managing decisions I've ever seen by taking out Paul Blackburn because there was a lefty and Michael Ciani up. Because Ollie did a great job here. He called his bluff and said, hey, You're taking him out because he's a lefty. So when you do that, I'll go to Walker. But he sent Ciani up to the plate. If Kotze would have just left in Paul Blackburn, he's out. Right. He got out of the inning. Like, it's right. crazy to me. Let me ask you this, though. Do you actually believe they're going to make the move with Victor Scott? Because, and here, here's, I also had somebody on Twitter tell me Pajes needs to be a AAA plane every day because he's the future Cardinal catcher. And I was really confused by that. Like, I, like that's what, that's what he we're dealing be a AAA, with, with people. But no, he's not because of that. But so what I'm saying is if you're going to send Scott down, you're probably, I mean, honestly, you could send Scott and Siani down. But you don't not have Ciani. another out. I know. I, you know, I'm no, I wouldn't even send Siani down because I think he's a really good defensive replacement and he's not a guy you need to continue developing. Well, that's why so, I'm saying yeah. you can't do it anyway. I wouldn't anyway. Like, even if, like, unless Carlson and Edmund were healthy, but I told those two were there, I'm perfectly, Siani's done a great job in his role, but his role can't be starting games for this team. And that's not and he, on him at all. Like, he's a fine major league bench player, but he's not a major league starter. And neither is Victor Scott right now. Let's just be honest. He's not. No, he's not at all. He's been, he's been, as bad as you can be offensively. 288 OPS. He has a 288 OPS. That's almost like impossible. That's that's a bad on base percentage. Leave out the slugging part. So, like, and it sucks for victory. I told he shouldn't have been up here. It was not on him. But you got to adjust here. Newport just has to be in center field, guys. I'm sorry. If he's costing you two runs a week out there, fine. But this offense, you cannot continue to have a black hole in the nine hole because, like, yeah, if one through eight were hitting, well, fine. But guess what? You have a black hole in the two hole and in the five or six hole, wherever Gorman's batting. You can't have four spots in your and, order that can't produce. And wherever Walker is. Right. Yeah. You and he's had at a couple least three moments. automatic outs yeah, but, every time and then four with your nine hitter. Yeah. You can't have it. I'm sorry. If this offense was performing like you thought it was going to, then fine. Michael Ciani can be there for a few weeks and you can live with it. But it's not. And the other thing, to be fair, no one has a 724 OPS, but it's not like he's hitting bullets all over the the field. He's been he's been really good. He was really good on this road trip. He was better. He was absolutely no, he was really better. good. Like, we, he was really we, good. We talked about. It. I'm just saying though, he's not driving the ball out of the ballpark. He's not. No, like he's yeah. you need he's power not doing him. that. And you need power. Like you're 29. Yeah. They are 29th, Caleb, in baseball in home runs. I thought who's 30th? How's that? How someone That's low, a, White Sox has to be. Like Luis Robert probably has their only home runs, and he's hurt. I mean, that very well could be. Let me. It has here. to Hold be me. the White Sox. They got out home three. It is. The they have ten. So they have ten. We have thirteen. It's it's pathetic, dude. Like it's horrible. Tyler O'Neill has seven. Do you know himself. it's wild? The Rangers only have fifteen. I was. Mike Trout. Mike Trout has eight. I know. Turner Ward has six or seven. Turner Ward. By the way. Taylor Ward. Ah, there you go. Taylor Ward. Turner Sorry. Ward probably would have I had more Turner Ward in my head. Anyway. And, um, right, hold on. Let's, let's, let's stay on the home runs real quick because yeah. I want to talk about that. Are you concerned that they're not hitting for power? And I do think, honestly, I will be 100% honest here. I think they've done a good job of like manufacturing runs, like better than I thought they would do. Like they, they're they doing a good job of getting guys over, getting them in. Like they've done a really good job of that so far. The problem, they're not hitting homers, dude. This is 2024 baseball. When You, you know how you score a lot of your runs? You hit a three-run homer, and there's half your runs for the day. That's one swing. Well, let me ask they you can't this. do that let right me, now. Let me ask you this. You did play spring games at home, like where the ball does not fly, and then you also played in Oak, the Oakland Coliseum where it's a fucking mausoleum out okay, there. I, like, I saw the Oakland Athletics hit three homers, just four I, homers this weekend. This fair. Week. I don't care. That's fair. That's fair. I was just asking. Like, Esteori Ruiz hit two. I don't care about where you're playing. You should out homer Esteori Ruiz in a series you play I, against the Oakland freaking A's. This this leads back to my original question to you about the offense is when do we get concerned that this is who they are? All of them offensively. They can't be this we, bad. Uh, uh, okay, but they weren't great. They were in the middle of the pack and everything last year. Middle of the road. Okay, right? that's okay. They're not I, even. Oh yes, they were top ten until Donovan and all the injuries, and they traded everyone. That's so fine. So for being fair, they were. That's fine. You can't say like 
you can't give me their final season stats when the last month they had Irving Lopez and Michael Ciani playing every day. That's fine. That's valid. Like you can, it just doesn't matter to me. Like you, they had Taylor Mott. Like it just, but uh, yeah, they. I mean, they were underwhelming. I would say for the middle months, like June and July and August. Absolutely, they were. So, or maybe just and July, April. So I think they were good. April, they were underwhelming. Now yeah, the pretty, pitching, yeah. a lot of that was done to the pitching, which I do want to talk about. Actually, I don't want to just good. be the pitching has been very, very good. You know what's but, hilarious is I was yeah. literally getting ready because we were going to do a pod on Sunday night, and then we just decided to wait till the end of the. uh Oakland series and kind of combine them. And I was literally had the, the uh, lowest ERA since July 9th in major league baseball was Blake Snell and Steven Matz. Like I had that all loaded to go five and zero with a 1.84 ERA. And then he fell apart in Arizona and then <laughs> did it again today. So I'm just going to wipe that completely off the slate. Cause that's no longer valid. Even though I did just say it, but it's no longer valid. Yeah, He's still been solid. Like I think his ERA is under three. Been, I would guess he's been fine. Yeah, he's okay. I think they – I honestly, I don't – I think it's on the Cardinals. Like, they didn't build him up like normal to keep him healthy, and he's falling apart late in games because he wasn't built up correctly. So, yeah, he's getting tired, and he's leaving his breaking ball up. Okay, like, of course. However, like, I think he's been fine. Like, honestly, they – he gave up four runs today. Those were games Cardinals should win in Oakland. Like, the guys – the two guys I really want to talk about are Kyle Gibson – I mean, not Kyle Gibson, Lance Lynn and Sonny Gray. I mean, we as much crap as we gave Mo over the offseason, not Mo, Mo and DeWitt, um, and said, hey, they didn't do enough. Those two have been great, man. Both of them have been great. And those are two guys that Mosaic brought in, and so far, so good. Yeah. I had a guy on uh, Facebook today who said um, Cardinals only have one good starting pitcher. So smart Alex sarcasm. Me said, obviously, you have not been watching Lance Lynn. And his response, are you ready for this? He has one win. I can't take that seriously. That's what, like, this are, these are people that roam them around us, dude. These people walk amongst us. It's, it is, yeah, whatever. Like, I just don't I, Right, I, but I'm just, like, it's so it's so annoying to listen to people who are so, like, you you obviously are new to baseball, bro. Like, you. Jacob DeGrom Lance, won a Cy Young when he was eight and nine one oh year, yeah. by the way. Like, I just think that um, – Lynn and and it, like you have your top two right now. Miles can be Miles now. Like to be fair, Miles can be Miles now. He's going to be good every once in a while. He's going to be okay most of the time, and he's going to have a horrendous start here and there. Like that's Kyle Gibson as well. That's what you're going to get. Yeah. And honestly, Stephen Matz. And it's not fun, but you just have to hope that maybe you have the good streaks with all of them for a little bit. That's what you have to hope for. Yeah, and it's also like if the offense was doing what it should be doing, this team's fourteen and five. Yeah, that's true. That's a very good like, point. Like to but be not. to be ten and not to be nine and ten, and for us to be sitting here saying they've scored three runs or less, and I think it was twelve of their of their nineteen games or thirteen of their nineteen games. Like that's inc- that's a great job from this pitching staff to even get you to nine wins. And if we sit here and we don't commend them after we said this off season they didn't do enough, it wasn't good enough, then we'd be phonies. I think the bullpen's been awesome. As yes. a whole, that the back end of the bullpen, man, Jojo Romero, Andrew Kittridge, and Ryan Helsley Kittry. are as automatic yes. as you can get right now. I, Ryan I literally Helsley, had all yeah. three of those guys written down as in the notes been, to talk about. All have been amazing. I want to go to Ryan Helsley for Helsley. a second. I owe him an apology. So a lot I'll of people right do. Now. So that's what I'm going to say. If you have been one of these people that have come on here and said, hey, Ryan Helsley doesn't Take the ball. Ryan Helsley doesn't want the ball. He can't needs rest. Dude, this guy is pitching every single one of your wins, and he is taking the ball whenever asked, and he is shoving it up the other team's ass. They're up one or two runs every time. It's not three run saves he's getting. It's one run most times, and they don't even have a chance against this guy right now. He has been the best reliever in baseball, and everyone who craps on this guy consistently, apologize. I did. I just did. I just apologize. Because he is legitimately the best reliever the Cardinals have had since Trevor Rosenthal and maybe even before him. Shot at Jason Mott. Yes. He's before Jack Rosenthal. That's true. But that yes. is fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's been awesome, dude. And Jojo Romero, automatic right now. He got one. Kittridge, too. Kittridge has been great. Um, Gio's by the way, fourth best reliever now. That's great. We'd be it. Hold on. We'd be incredibly remiss if we didn't say how good Matthew Libertor has been. Really good. He's been like, really good. It, it's like he's found a role and found a home, maybe. I'm not saying that's where he's going to stay the rest of his career, but for right now, He's found a really good, ho- a great home. When you have him and Romero from the left side, and honestly, like you and said, Thompson? the pitching has not been the problem here. You've had oh, a great. couple of hiccups. Had a, Miles had another hiccup. You've had a, you know, you've had. It's happened. It happens. Sonny Gray has been incredible. By the way, shout out Sonny for his hundredth win. 
And that wild dude's 34 and he just got his 100th win. That shows you that that goes back to the whole you cannot make an argument for wins and losses with starting pitching. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Yeah, it's it, yeah, he's been great, man. 11 innings, no runs to start his Cardinals career is great. Um, by the way, this is something that's so big, I think, that not enough people are talking about. The dude was on 65 and 75 pitch limits total in his two games. He gave you five and six innings on those pitch limits. That's incredible. For him to go out there and not and say, hey, I want the ball in St. Louis. And a lot of people were like, 65 pitches, not very much, including me. He's giving you four max. The fact that he was like, I'm not putting my team in a bad spot here. I'm going to pitch to contact, and I'm going to give you five and six innings. Like, how many times do we see pitchers take 100 pitches to get through five? The fact that we he's, have a, it's incredible. We haven't seen two Bulldogs on a team since Wayno and Lackey. You know, and you can go back to Wayno and Carpenter, yeah. too, but it's well, nice Wayno to have two. Was that after Wayno and Lackey? Would that have been after? We had or... Wayno, Lackey, and Lynn. That is true, but Lynn at the time was not. 2015, he, was he might have been hurt. He might have been 2015. Yeah, I don't remember that year. Uh, but either way, yes, it is nice to have. I love watching those two. They are. I love watching There's competitors. Lynn call the guy who bunts a fucking pussy after he strikes three <laughs> guys out. Right Jazz in the row. <laughs> That's the best thing of and, all time. Uh, that if you haven't watched the video, it's a John boy. I think that had put it out. Yeah. I was laughing. So hard. my neighbor bunting, actually shared bunting, it with me and I was laughing. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. So I just hard, love dude. his mentality. Like even yeah, me too. here's the thing. I don't think Lance Lynn's going to be a sub three ERA pitcher this year. I Probably don't not. I don't know if he's going to be a sub three, five. I mean, but the fact that we're even talking about that, like three, five to four as a possibility, when I think all of us in coming into the year are saying, oh, I hope he's not a five, you know, I think, I don't know if he's back to 2021, 2022 Lance Lynn. I don't know, but I do think he's going to be a lot better than people thought to the point to where I'd be kind of surprised if he's not back next year. Like that's where I'm at. I think, I think he's going to earn that opt in from the Cardinals because he just, He's doing Lance Lynn things, man. He's going to give up homers. Like, he's going to. It's going to happen. You're going to have guys like Jake Berger who hit two off him, and you better score more than four runs that day. Right. But he's also going to have starts where he just wins you a game. He went seven innings and gave one run yesterday. I don't care if it's the Oakland Athletics. The Oakland Athletics destroyed the Tigers last weekend. Right, right. Like, the a and people, this frustrates me. Like, yeah, I won the sweep today. They didn't. I'm never mad about a series win, even though, like I said, they continue to lose the last game of a series. Have lost every last game of a series, by the way, so yep. far. Um, but the Oakland A's aren't going 0 and 162. So every team that I, plays them is not going I to know. sweep them. I know. The, guess what the A's did last year? They swept the Atlanta Braves and in route to 52 win season. You're going to lose games to teams like that. It's going to happen. Yep. Um, okay. Conversely, how concerned are you about the 5.82 ERA for Miles and the 6.16 ERA from Kyle Gibson? I don't, I don't know where to sit on. Oh, it's only four starts, but then also be excited about Lance. I think Lynch it's only three starts. starts for the for um, Kyle. Okay, either way, like where? I mean that those are bad numbers, bro. Like, yeah, um, for Miles, I'm not because I. Miles had this weird – was his start against the Dynamax was really weird. He was cruising the first four innings of that start. And for whatever reason, the fifth inning, some balls found some holes. Some of them hit hard, some of them not. And then the bases were loaded, and you brought – they had a quick hook on him, rightfully so, and brought in, oh, gosh, Andre Pallante, who then proceeded to give up every inherited runner, which then that's just – that's three earned runs that goes to Miles Michaelis. That, like, he, he put on base, sure, but if he was in, would he have given up all three? I don't know. Um, so that that really inflates an ERA right there. And for Kyle Gibson, I'm just not concerned because I think he is who he is. And who he is is a guy that's going to be around a four or five and going to win, going to help you win a lot of games. I think that's what I think he's going to do. If how your offense concerned, is hitting. How concerned are you about Gio right now? I'm not. I think he's your fourth best reliever right now. And and if Keenan Middleton and Riley O'Brien are back, he might be fifth or sixth. But I I think Gio's a really, really good option to have that's not having to be your setup, man. You know, if he's your sixth Is inning, seventh inning guy, agreed. that's great. Like, how many times have we had guys in the sixth, seventh inning that we just feel like, uh, like, how is this guy going to get three outs? I don't feel that way when Gio's in the game ever. Yeah, um, it's really interesting to see how that's going to work out there. I am also really intrigued to see what is the word on Middleton? Like, what do we know about Middleton O'Brien? Is there any anything? Because I have not seen anything, but that's, that doesn't mean that means nothing. They have both started a throwing program. Okay, that's good. That's so good that that means, um, four arm. They both had forearm issues. Good news is if they're starting a throwing program, that means it hasn't gotten to. Oh, this is a Tommy John situation. So that's right. good. 
Um, I'm glad they're taking their time with those two. One, because we talked about it, the bullpen's been really good, so you don't need to rush them back. But and two, I just don't. You're gonna need those guys at some point, but you cannot rush them back. Like you can't rush back relievers with arm injuries. It's just a bad idea. I think we talked about it last time, and I think we spoke it, about it pretty logically. But it still continues to be a thing whenever he's not in the lineup, and that's the Mason Win thing. And I thought to give Jeff Jones a lot of credit on what he said. Uh, if you haven't seen the tweet, I was I was in full agreement with essentially, hey, maybe we can make the argument that Mason Wynn is performing this way because they are giving him days off. Um, I don't know where to stand on that. I know it's early. I know he's young, but I also know that he's performing well. And I think somebody t- posted on our fa- on our uh, YouTube thing, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, there is some val- validity there with that. Where do you stand on the Mason Wynn thing? And what do you think? Do you see maybe him getting more starts going forward? Or do you think they're just going to kind of play him 140 games, 135 games this year? Well, I think they said he has a back injury, like a lower back injury that's going on right now. So if that's on the, the other case, side of it is what Ollie said, right? On the other, never, never a thing I know. back injuries. Um, you're never on the other side of it. You're on the other side of it until it creeps up again. Right. So yeah, manage it. Like I, I need Mason Wynn needs to be healthy the entire year, unless Tommy Edmonds back. And even then you want Mason to be healthy, but like until Tommy Edmonds back, that guy can't get hurt. You cannot yeah. lose him, especially with what we just talked about with the center field situation. You can have that and shortstop being a negative. Like, imagine how bad this offense would be right now if Mason Wynn was performing the way we thought he was going to be offensively. I know. Like, he's. let's talk about him just in general right now. He's Absolutely. awesome. Awesome. Yes. His approach right now is so sound. And last year he came up, it was so obvious he was trying to make an impression. And I didn't, yeah, I didn't never blame the guy that kids up and wants to make a big impression. That's obviously what everyone wants to do. But he was trying to homer every time. It was so obvious. He has no homers. That's fine. He's hitting doubles. He's hitting singles. And, dude, he's wall, he walked twice today. Again, he's walked, like, I think, five times his last three games. Like, his approach is so sound. And he's just taking what the pitcher gives him. Like, I can't even tell you how many times already this year. I've seen just like a, an 0-2 or a 2-2 breaking ball that last year he would have swung over. He just hits it in the right center for a single. And with his speed, that becomes a double, and then you knock him in. Like, I have been so, so impressed with Mason Wynn um, to the point where I couldn't have predicted he's been 350 at this point. Like, no way would I have saw that coming. But it's just – it's really impressive to see a guy who says, I'm not trying to homer anymore – he said this, I'm trying to get on base because I know I'm going to be at the bottom of the order and the guys like Donovan and Goldie behind me are going to get me in. And to see him say that is one thing, but he's doing it and he's doing it very well. And I'm very impressed. Um, so let's talk a little bit around the league. By the way, as we do that, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We greatly appreciate you. Uh, if you're on Spotify or Apple, if you could follow us, we greatly appreciate it. Did see we have like 70 some followers on Spotify. I just saw that too. Yeah. All right. So thank you guys. Keep that coming. Really appreciate that. Uh, we're almost to 700. We're getting close to 700 on YouTube. We would like you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Please tell a friend. We The more the merrier. We got a lot of stuff coming up. But coming into town. Hold on. Bef- oh, I think you said we were going to go around the league. Well, I was going to get to, like, it kind of goes hand in hand for me. Okay. Coming but, into but town. Or time, is- hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. Good Lord. <laughs> I wanted to say something and then you talked. Hey, if you're me. new to the podcast, get used to this. Yeah, whatever. We need, before we go into any other league stuff. We need to give our predictions for this series well, because we it, never do, and I'm and it's every time we don't do it until like minute fifty eight. It's every time. I, I had a really nice segue into the series, and you just completely stepped on it. Well, then your segue was back. You're going to look around the league because no, you stopped me Lewis. three times, <laughs> twice actually. With hold on, hold on, three times. Still, okay, right, continue. This weekend, the Cardinals welcome the Red Hot Brewers. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, Jesus Christ. Who, by the way, all of a sudden can hit. Yeah. Like, they're off. I think they're third or fourth in home runs. They're up there in OPS. They're up there in average. Willie Adamas, been great. Yelich looks like the old Yelich. Again, He's hurt. we're talking 20 games. He's hurt. He got hurt. Did not know that. Back, in, when, back injury. When did that happen? Just a day or yeah. two ago? I think yesterday. Okay. All right. Missed that. Um, so we're missing so, Christian Yelich. And William Contreras is out of his mind right now. And tomorrow night, we might get the biggest – um, mismatch in pitching history as Freddie Peralta takes on Kyle Gibson. <laughs> Definitely not the biggest. Um, Jordan Walker bobblehead night, by the way, for those of you heading down to the yeah, maybe they'll get him going. Maybe they'll get him going. Um, Freddie Peralta is very good. And the Brewer, I, I don't know what's going on with this Brewers offense. It's young. It's fun. They're doing a lot of fun things. I don't, I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think they're this good offensively. But the longer it continues, the more confidence they get and the more likely that it just spirals into a really good season for the Brewers again out of nowhere. 
And that's kind of frustrating. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Freddie Peralta pitching very well this year, by the way. Like he looks dominant, but we've oh, seen yeah. this from oh, seen this from Freddie before, though. So he's a stud, you know, we'll dude. see. He's a stud. We'll see what happens. Fantasy um, legend for me, by the way. And <laughs> and that oh Jesus Christ, man. he's been great for me. I'm sure that everyone wants to hear about your fantasy team. By I have the way. a 1.0 ERA this week. Oh Jesus, there it is. And then on Saturday. Uh, we have, I don't even know who D.L. Hall is. Is that his name? He's the guy they got for Corbin Burns from the Warriors. Oh, I did know that. Against Miles Michaelis. Uh, bet the over. We have a 7 ERA versus a 6 ERA. Take the over. Absolutely. I by the way, the my, games. It, it hit, by the way, on the night that I told you to take the over. It hit. You're welcome. Um, and then on Sunday, we've got, oh, if I could see, it'd be even better. Sonny Gray. Ray, oh, Co- Colin Ray and Sonny Gray. If you don't win that game, I'm over with the season, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if you don't win that game against the Brewers at home, here's the thing. I once again, 19 games, a lot of negativity, um, some positives. Mason win, Yvonne Herrera, Wilson Contreras has been great. Yes, this is a series you have to win. Like, you have to get, get you have to get on a good note here, man. Like, you don't have to sweep, you don't have to annihilate them. But if they score three runs or less in all three of these games, I don't know, man. Like, you've, I think this is a get right series for the Cardinals. You're playing your first. In division season series of the season, um, you're playing at home against the team that's likely to be your biggest competitor for the division. You know the Cubs are might be in there too, but the Brewers for sure will. I think, like they've hit Freddie Peralta very well historically. So go get your offense going. You know we need one of or two of Goldie Gorman, um, Walker to get going. Two of the three need to get going in the series. Uh, so let's make our predictions. Okay. All right, I say they win one of three. I think they went two of three. Okay. I predicted right. to say sweep. I'm 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 halfway. I kind of want to say sweep. I'm not going to. Yeah, I say they win one of three. I think and the reason here's the reason. Going, right? The reason I just don't trust the offense right now. I have yeah. no like I'm probably gonna bet a lot on the Milwaukee Brewers like money line for Friday night or run line or whatever it is with Peralta against Gibson. Like that just sounds the like Cardinals a, destroy Freddie Peralta. I, like destroy. It's not even close. Th- not this, not this iteration of the Cardinals. They're not destroying anybody. So I don't okay. buy into that yet. We'll see. It's I hope I'm wrong. Series. I hope I'm wrong. You are correct. It should be. Um my pick to click pitching wise is Sonny Gray because I'd like to see him continue Going out this on dominance that he has. Okay. Um well, I'm not Gibson gonna, and Michaelis? first of all I'm not picking Gibson or Michaelis. Like they both have almost 70 R eight, six and seventy R eight. So I'm picking I think, I think Kyle Gibson does well on on Friday. I'll pick Kyle okay. Gibson. Uh, who I'm is predicting your six innings, two earned for him on Friday. Have you been hitting the height? Have you been at cams already? No, six innings, two earned. He can do. It. He went seven innings. He gave one. I mean, two against the Padres. That's true. Um, who is your hitter? Uh gosh, I don't want any of the hitters right now. Um, Lars Newpar. Okay, I'm gonna go Willie. Righties. No, you're facing two righties. Yeah, well, he's been so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Willie because running. against his brother, I'm gonna go yeah. with Willie <laughs> against his brother. Yeah, well, well, you know, we, I mean, I might all pick it takes William is, Contreras. Can I pick an opposite <laughs> team? All it takes is this much motivation, I think, to get Wilson fired up, and that mm-hmm. could be that's all he needs right there. Yeah, he's been very good, and this adds. I want to go into one more thing about the offense because we didn't talk about this. I don't know how to evaluate runners in scoring position hitting because I don't. I don't know if it's like eventually it's going to you know regress to the mean or progress in this situation. But how concerning of is it to you that every time they seemingly have a chance with two outs and runs in scoring position, they we all know everyone in the stadium, everyone at home, everyone in that dugout knows they're not coming through. Is it just me? I'm going to answer your question with a question. Is it just me, or is it because we watch the team every day, or has this been a feels like this has been a problem with the Cardinals for a long time? 2022, just, they were very good. Okay, so then it is just me. But last year, it felt like. Even when you get guys on second and third with nobody out, you feel like, oh, we're probably going to fuck it up. Like, that's how you feel. Yeah, I do think a lot of teams have that sentiment. I, I really do. And a big part of it is, once again, like the middle of the order is not coming through. You know? Like, yeah. that's what it is. And I get it. It's difficult to hit. I understand. But if Gorman and Goldie aren't hitting, and Arenado's hitting but not for power, because he's betting like 290 or something right now, but he's not hitting for power is, at all. Yes. Um, then it's going to be tough to score runs. And I do think hitting with runners in scoring position ha- is a problem for a lot of teams just because, like, you can bet 300 and it still feels bad because seven out of the 10 times you're not doing well in that situation. But 
for the Cardinals, I think the biggest problem is they're not hitting home runs, man. You've got to be able to score without needing to string together three hits. Hey, stringing together three hits is incredibly difficult in 2024 baseball because the pitches are too good, unless you're Miles Michaelis or Kyle Gibson, in which case it's a cakewalk, apparently, to string three hits against them. Like So they've, they've got to start in for power or this isn't going to come together. I think it will come. But it's hard to say that it's because it's April because they've played a lot of warm areas. Like they played in San Diego and they played in LA and they're Oakland's not Arizona. Uh, Oakland's kind of cold, but Arizona, right? So I don't know, but I don't know. Well, we've we've got we talked about that. We've talked about the upcoming, and I, now I want to switch gears to just things that we continue to not love to talk about. Um, but talk really, about. really sucks about Whitey Herzog. Like ninety two oh. years old, you can't be. I mean, you can't be upset for living ninety two years old. You know, I mean, that's yeah. like that's a really good life, to be honest. He was yeah. at opening day. I'm so geeked that he got to do that. Cards fans got to see him there. Uh, that is the guy that I will continue to see the McGee jersey with the baby blue in the back. Like that, that was my eight years old falling in love with baseball. I'd been to games before, but I was little. I didn't really know it. I didn't start playing t-ball until I was like eight. And then that was that year, 1982, and Whitey was the manager. And that was the year I fell in love with the Cardinals. I fell in love with baseball. I fell in love with all of it. I'd always liked the game and I'd always like to play it, but that was when I started to really understand and, and pay attention to players, managers, and everything else. Baseball cards I'd been getting for a while, but never been paid much attention. Whitey Herzog, massive part of my youth, massive part of my love of baseball, massive part of Cardinal legend. And hopefully they build a, a, a statue of him somewhere. I don't know if they will. I also hope they put a patch. One of my former students, Bruce, sent me a message that probably going to do a patch, right? And I was like, they I would will. assume so. Yeah. Hey, well, yeah. Obviously, he's a legend. I didn't get to watch him because I wasn't alive or watching right. range. But you know, you know that he's special when Tony La Russa, who won two World Series here, or no, one. He won one World Series here, and went Tony to won two. No, he won oh, two. Six. Yeah, he went to yeah. yeah one, two, went to three. And the thing that people always said about him, even in 2011, was that he wasn't Whitey Herzog. Yeah, like that's how special he is. And obviously, it's incredibly sad. Even more so, I think, because. The cars have lost a lot of legends in the last five years. Like yeah. opening day is kind of somber nowadays, I feel like, just because of what it used to be and not seeing Gibson and Lou Brock and now Whitey's not going to be Mike there anymore. Mike Shannon. Mike Shannon and um I think we've been missing McCarver. Him. Yeah, it's it's yeah. I mean it's a lot of a lot of great people are gone, but um it's obviously incredibly sad. Pretty cool. I thought that they won the game the way they did. Um three to two. Where he was a 580 career win percentage when one run games, which is incredible. Um, why he was, and they didn't hit a homer, they, they scored a run without the ball leaving the infield. It was like he was making that happen. Yes. He's like, they, they're gonna win this game like this today. So it's pretty mean, cool. Do you see, do you see what Ali said about it? He said, I, I told not. Michael Siani before the game that if there's a situation, we're squeezing today. <laughs> he was like, we're going to do it, even if it doesn't work, yeah. we're gonna see. And that's um, pretty cool. You know, you talked about like how legendary you are when the name is synonymous with what it is that, I mean, they named the, a, a style of baseball after him. I mean, whitey ball, they changed became, it from Billy ball to whitey ball, right? It became a thing. And, you know, like I said, um, absolute legend in my book, absolute legend, loved him here. Should have won two world series, Don Dakinger. I mean, if you, if you ever want a chance also to know about whitey as a person, read the story about him and Don, obviously blew the call in game six against the Royals that would have given the Cardinals the World Series championship. We lose, get destroyed in game seven. But if you, like Don Dakinger, the way the Whitey handled him and treated him when he was getting death threats from everybody in St. Louis, essentially, um, really cool. Like, kind of shows what a good person the Whitey was and obviously remained in the St. Louis area. I think he lived over in, like, the Breeze area or new Baden somewhere in that area. I'm not positive. So watch um, every Cardinal game too. Absolutely. And, like there's never going to be, I don't care what any other manager in the future does. They will never be one more beloved than Whitey Herzog. And Cardinals I think you're right. Thing. I think you're absolutely right. Just because um, what he meant, like what he's, he means like, think about guys like Willie McGee and Ozzy Smith and like two of the most popular players of your lifetime and still remain to be two of the most popular his, players in Cardinal history why he made those guys who they were because of yep. the style he let them play and allowed them to play. Um, Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to say this. I will admit when I'm wrong, or not when I'm wrong, but when I can change. Oh, I try no, to you change. admit when you're wrong. Right. Well, I did. I admit I was wrong about Ryan Helsley earlier. But either way, um, Chip Carey's growing on me a little bit. He's good. 
well, he's okay. Like he's getting better. He's good. Here's the thing. His, I just think it's him, and I'm too critical. I I can't be critical of the human if that's who he is. But I think he's gotten better. And also, I thought it was really cool that his son was broadcasting A's games, and they were out there together. Yeah, I thought that was really really awesome. So I think him Chip is starting to grow really on me a little bit. I think Brad Thompson helps Chip at times. Yeah. Like I think that's a good. I think they're a really good match. Jim Edmonds is always going to be Jim Edmonds. So when he's in there, I think it's a little more difficult for Chip. But I think Brad, yeah. Brad and, and Chip do a they really some, good job. He's, they have some legitimately funny moments that make They do. Laugh. And and Chip has some legitimately sneaky, funny lines that yeah. I don't think a lot of people maybe get. But I will find myself laughing when he says them because they're also, very sneaky. I also really enjoyed this series in particular. One, I enjoyed his perspective on um, the A's moving. And that he wasn't just caping for Major League Baseball. He was yep. saying, like, this shouldn't be happening. He was like, the stadium – there was a highlight because they were showing highlights of Oakland A's players. And it was um, – I remember, I think it was from, like, five years ago when they were in the playoffs. And he said, look at all those fans that show up when you're winning. I thought that was great. Um, and I also liked that they did that, that the Connell's broadcast made a point to say this is our last time ever being in Oakland. And we're going to show Vita Blue and Dennis Eckersley and Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco. I thought that was pretty cool. That they, um, yeah. that they did that. While we're talking broadcasting, um, le- another legend walks away right in the middle of, I mean, began the season, John Sterling. I mean, 85 years old, 5,600 Yankees games, he's called. Like, absolute legend. I'm not a Yankees fan. I've never been. I, I just never grew up as a – I always, like, manually, I liked a lot of their players, but never really found myself rooting for the Yankees, but loved listening to that man call a game. Like, he was – I think he's my favorite. He's my favorite announcer, I think, in my lifetime. Him and Vince Cole. Uh, uh, Vince Cole, yeah. Vince Cole and Jack Buck for me. So – I just – I I was no life for Jack Buck. Right. Uh, yeah, I get it. I, I His home run calls are awesome. And, and, yes. And did you see – so it came out originally, and I don't know who tweeted this out, but it was wrong, apparently, that it was, like, health-related. And then he told Michael Kay, the current broadcaster for the Yankees, the TV side, he said, hey, tell everyone that it's not because I'm sick. It's because I was tired of coming to the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I put out done. a tweet. It was like, I hate all, everything about this because the way they were portraying it it's was how that recorded. something was wrong. Right, and that he had to step down. So. And it still might be, and he didn't want that out there. Right, that's agreed. possible. But agreed. I just thought that was funny. Like, some of the the home run calls with John Sterling, and if you've ever listened to him, which I'm sure you guys have, if you haven't, they're so funny, man. And there's a there's a video of him getting hit in the face with the ball, and him being like, "Oh, it just hit me in the face." Like, oh, he, that was, was like amazing. last year, right? I think yeah. that was last year. He he's amazing. Like he was one of the best for sure. Remind me, I'm real. I'm losing it right now. I know who was the Mariners guy because he was also a legend. Um, that did the. Uh, Break out the rye bread and oh. salami and mud. you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Yep. Oh gosh, that's well, it's a Macklemore song. Like that, you that was what it was. Yeah, you I'm looking at that. Yeah, but anyway, he also legendary voice. Like those guys, it, it's sad. Some of these guys that are young now are going to become the legends of the game. But I don't know if we ever get a, a Jack Buck, John Sterling, Vince Scully. Let me fill in the blanks that that goes on and on and on. Dave but Niehaus. Dave Niehaus. Bingo. Is that it? I think so. Yeah. It doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, it is. Yep. It's on the um, so yeah, anyway. Um, you know, it that was that was a that was a sad moment for Yankees fans, I'm sure. A few other things yeah. around the league. I don't want to get deep into this, but the Otani thing is still wild to me. Sixteen million dollars. Like that Yeah. It I don't sure even know seems what this like is. sure seems like he definitely got screwed here. Um there was a six like a twenty, thirty page document released of everything. Like Ipe is going to jail for a long time. He Prison does appear that, time. yeah. Like, I think Shohei is completely innocent here. And I've heard, I've listened to a lot of major leaguers speak about this. And um, Tyler Glass now is the most recent one, obviously a teammate of Otani right now. He said, dude, there are so many people that this could happen to and they wouldn't know in Major League Baseball because they just don't check. It's one thing they want out of their mind. They don't want to think about it. Um, and he was like, we knew immediately Otani was innocent because he was just like, immediately when it happened, he got super angry in the clubhouse and he was like, he went to the authorities, like, take all my stuff, my phone, everything, and check everything. I didn't have anything to do with this. Right. So um, it seems like just a very sad situation for Otani. Obviously, he's not crying poor or anything, but $16 million is a lot of money. Yeah. Ipe lost $40 million total in betting, and he won 140 that, It makes you really question, like, not that. who the – like, who he – that guy is. That guy was – he must have had a lot coming in and a lot going out, like. It's just crazy to me that, that you can be Shohei, if you can be Shohei, and live almost every day with this guy and have no idea what he's doing to you. 
Oh, terror. Absolutely disgusting. Um, it sucks, dude. It sucks. Because that was like the only guy he felt he could trust over here for a long time. Yep. More Cardinals sort of semi-related news. What are your thoughts on Jordan Montgomery leaving Scott Boris? Do you think you know, we see more people do this? Um, I know that obviously he kind of feels like maybe he got, I don't know if he got hosed, but. He got hosed. Yeah, okay, there you go. I mean, that's kind of where I was going. Yeah, um, like, what, do you, what are your thoughts the, on that? One, I thought, I'm not surprising. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if it happens more. And I don't know if to blame Scott Boris for this or if it's just owners don't like Scott Boris and they're tired of playing his games, which I do think is part of it. That owners, I don't know, I'm not going to say it's collusion because that's obviously a serious thing that's happened in this game a lot. But it does seem like owners are just tired of his shit and tired of waiting him out and all this. And I think for Monty, like he's he's not the prototypical Scott Boris client that's going to benefit from all of his antics. You know what I mean? He's not right. Um, Bryce Harper and Manny Machado who had got those massive deals in um in March. So it just didn't never made sense for me for him to be there trying to be in with Scott Boris. It just doesn't make it wasn't a fit. Like Montgomery's not a guy that you hold out until March and say he's eventually going to get paid a lot of money because he's a guy a lot of people feel like they have someone similar internally. And so it doesn't surprise me. Uh, I feel for Monty, though. Like I feel like if he was just running the free agency the way most other guys would have done it, most other agents, he probably gets four for 80, five for 100. Yeah. And he just got hosed on that. Yeah. Has he started a game yet or is that this week? First game's Friday. So, and okay, so we'll, that's what the I will face him next Wednesday. Yeah. I think, okay. Not? All right. That's what I thought. So I wasn't positive, but I thought it was coming up. Is what they said. Um, it, let's stay in the division for the last two things I have, and then if there's anything else you, I want to get your takes on on one of these. Jared Jones throwing fifty pitches. Uh, go. I don't know. Like, here's the, I have a couple of thoughts. One, I get it because, and I appreciate organizations trying to protect their young players. I do. I appreciate that. I'm sure Jared Jones does to some extent as well. Paul Skeens will appreciate it when he's up. But my, my biggest thought is, yeah, he throws like 100. So when we're seeing how the correlation between throwing velocity for a lot of innings is leading to Tommy John, it's like the evidence is too strong to just disregard that that's a reason why players are getting injured. But at some point, like if this is going to be who he is and he's a guy that throws 98, let him go, man. Like let him go pitch. He's made his decision. He wants to throw this hard. <laughs> like Tyler Glass had a really interesting comment on this. And he said, I made the decision from a really young age that I was going to throw really hard and I knew what risk was coming with it. Cause, but I was going to make a lot of money doing it. It's worked out for him. And if other pitchers are going to make that decision, then it's kind of just the reality of it is guys accept the Tommy John's coming, but I, I don't, I'm not mad at the pirates for it. I think it makes a lot of sense. Mark DeRosa made a really good point. And I'm paraphrasing big time here on what he said, because I obviously don't remember the exact quote, but he said, I think he coaches like a pretty Big time 13U like baseball team with his sons on, like in Texas, I think. And I think they play Probably a Georgia. lot of, yeah, maybe wherever he is, like he right we're in that area. But um, he was talking about, he's like, we can get mad at the analytics about the pitching. And and he said the velocity, but he said, everyone is chasing it right now. And he said, and if you're not hitting it, you're not making a team at the younger ages, not an elite team at all. You're not even getting a sniff. And he said, but also with the Pirates, they're, they're all going to continue to run the analytics, but they're also doing the right thing for the guy. Like, mm -hmm. he's like, I didn't love it with Strasburg, but I understood it. You guys, it's early in the year. I get it. Like, I thought that was interesting that, like, no matter what, we can change. We Because you and I talked about this not too long ago. Is pitching going to change? And it's like, right now, it's not because everybody's still chasing velocity at every age. And, like, they, and, and for the players, they should be. Like, that's what's going to get you paid. Right. Sorry. Yep. <clears throat> that's what's going to get you a chance in college. It's what's going to get you a chance to get drafted. Like Brian Hudson, the reason he's been great for the Brewers, the reason he got drafted, he was throwing 93, 94 in high school. Right. If he was throwing yep. 88, he's not getting drafted. He's going to play in college somewhere and we'll see what happens from there. So I don't think it's going to be a thing that changes. I do want to say one thing that is a bit annoying. And I think this coincides with the Max Meyer getting sent down after being great because they want to manage his workload. Um, is it does feel like every team's just blindly throwing darts at the board and hoping that they do something right. Because what did what did we talk about last year with Yuri Perez? They were managing his workload and yep. not letting him throw as much, and he's getting Tommy John this year. So like I don't think there's it's a perfect science at this point. Well, and I don't even DeRose, know if he's more or less likely throwing more innings. I don't, I just don't know. DeRose also brought up a really good point that I had never thought of. That not only are like you're you're yeah you're limiting innings in the off season or in the season, but in the off season these guys are still chasing velo. Like in their workouts, the they're line, still, yeah. yeah, they're good. Exactly. So he's like, you're still throwing as hard with as much spin as you can 
constantly. Like eventually, it's just yeah. So like as a team, I don't know what you. I I mean, Paul Skeens is going to be up soon, right? Like he's, he's doing like two, three innings at a time right now. But maybe they bring you know, him up. Like, and put him. You think? Do you think they bring him up and put him in the bullpen? David Bednar's been bad. Beaten up. No, no way. Paul I don't think so either. Pitcher. So you do you think that they don't even see him <laughs> in the twenty twenty four scenario? I mean, the pirate. I, I don't know. know what's going on with the Pirates. I don't understand that. They're very but, those. Yeah, I will tell you, Jones and Skeens are very scary top of the with with Mitch Keller. That's a scary top of the rotation. Absolutely. The the like I, I don't know the answer to any of this. I don't think anyone does, and that's what's a little bit frustrating. Is TJ has been around since what, like the seventies or eighties? Is that when it started? Yeah, in that area, yeah. And we have no. It seems like we have no more information on what's causing no. these ligament tears than we did then. And I think the reality is guys are throwing so hard, and it's just catching up to them. Like and if you look spin. at it, I yeah, think then you add the spin rates. I think Hunter Green and one other pitcher, and I don't want to put this on them. It's Hunter Green and someone else. And I can't remember who it is. There's two major league pitchers who averaged 97 as a starter last year that aren't on the IL right now, and it's um the Hunter Green and one more person. Was it that's Scoobal? How, that's, May, or was it Scoobal Maybe. Maybe. That that's how yeah. rare it is. I think maybe yeah. it's Cole Reagan's. That's how oh, rare it, it is been. for these guys that are throwing that hard at 180 innings. Like we saw with Spencer Strider out for the year how with. Uh, um, the modified Tommy John surgery that only that you can recover faster from. It's just love that keep Royals happening. team. I'll stick like, with it. Bobby it Witts you... went in a Bobby Witts went in MVP this year. Yeah. No, Mike Trout. I might have something to say about that. Um, Bobby Witts gonna steal fifty bases and hit forty home runs. He might be forty fifty. And that's no forty eighty from Acuna. That's called fatigue. I didn't. Right I didn't say that he was Ronald Acuna. Mike Trout might hit sixty five homers. So I don't know. <laughs> um, I I I don't know what I was gonna say now. Oh, I forgot. Okay, final thing I have, and then if you got anything else from around the league or anything else, let me know. Big time shout out to one of my favorite non cardinal baseball players, Andrew McCutcheon. First of all, class one of the classiest humans baseball's maybe yeah. ever had. Two, what a pillar for Pittsburgh. And obviously he left and then to come back. Like, but three to be homers. three hundred homers. So so here's what I learned this week was he is one of four players to have two thousand hits. 200 stolen bases and 300 home runs in major league history. So my He's question to you is, is he a hall of famer? That was my question. Yeah, I think he is because here's the thing. And I, I get that. We want to talk about Andrew Jones, not being in the hall of fame, the amazing counting stats stack I had in his career. And when Jim Edmonds and all that stuff, and I get looking back and saying, well, he's not Willie Mays, you know, well, he's not, you know, these, this player, that player that got these incredible counting stats. There is not, I mean, I can't name you three, even I can I couldn't name you three center fielders better in my generation of baseball. Like it's it's who That's... Trout, Beltran, and McCutcheon. Me Edmonds, maybe would you put yeah, him? I, in? That's I not mean... my era. I don't remember. Okay, that's Edmonds. fair. That's fair. But like I mean, Beltran's kind of before Beltran's kind of before I your watched, era too. I watched like eight years of Beltran's career though. Yeah, that's that's fair. So if you want to even disregard Beltran, fine. But then it's Trout and it's McCutcheon for me. And maybe J-Rod will get there. But, like, Andrew McCutcheon, first off, fun story, the first Cardinal game I remember going to um, <laughs> was with you and I also uh, obviously our family. Andrew McCutcheon had a leadoff triple to start the game. I liked him ever since. How in the world do you remember that stuff? Because I, I remember never... thinking, wow, I've never seen someone run that fast. Uh, I wish I would have paid more attention to who the other three were. Two of them, A-Rod and Bonds. I just do not remember who the third one was, and They're I wish right. I would have. <laughs> so, so, right. so the people but that did neither it in the Hall of Fame, the people that did it, the people that did it, um, that besides Andrew McCutcheon were taking massive amounts of PEDs. But I, I just love that man so much. Like he's great. He, what he did, I mean, he brought baseball. Like what's Pittsburgh his career award? Do you terrible. know, forty-eight and a half. I think is oh, what I saw. That's tough. Um, probably because of injuries. You think? Yeah, forty-eight and a half. Man, that might not be a Hall of Famer then. I, I, but man, when you look at those, like one of four to do that, which by the way, and I know you can I, arbitrary, you, you decided three, pick three categories, whatever. But, but they're but, very important categories. Agreed. Agreed. From a lead He's off a great guy, defensive center fielder, too. I wanted to look that up actually. I wonder how many gold gloves that he actually did win. Let me look that up real quick. Winning gold gloves in center field is so tough. One, one gold one. glove. That's that, that might hurt him. So who would have been winning all those in the early 2010s? Are you shocked that he's only a five-time All Star? No, I am. I also think I also think All Star game, uh, All Stars games being like an accomplishment, is stupid. But it is used because it's I only mean, half they do, this, I'm it's just stupid. saying it's only it, half the season. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying. Um, you know, so the you center, know what they should do? They should they should be like, okay, he's an All Star, fine, halfway through the season. But what they should use is just the, like All Pro. 
you know, all pro teams. That means more so, to me than anything. So who would have been in that 13, 2013 to 2017 Carlos Gomez range? might have had a couple. Yeah, maybe. He was very good for like two or three years in Milwaukee. There's somebody that there's somebody big that we're missing, dude, and I don't know who it is. Oh, we should know this. Field. I don't know. He would have been my guest for most of them. Yeah, interesting. But anyway, where? I just thought that that was really an interesting. John Jay, stat. did John Jay win one? Yeah, I don't think. Wasn't so. there like two straight years where he didn't have an heir? Um, I don't, I don't know that answer. I don't know. Either way, anything you've got? An amazing career. If he's not in the Hall of Fame, he's not in the Hall of Fame. But he's to me kind of with Felix Hernandez. To where, like, there are two guys with me when I was growing up. I put both of them in the Hall of Fame because I they were so dominant for so long in my childhood that I would put them in. But I, older voters just want it because they compare them to Mickey Mantle. And so here we go, if you would well, like to know. Because, yeah. see, this is also I, one thing that I hate about Major League Baseball is that they give three outfielders stupid. their gold glove instead of so left. Stupid. Yeah, it's idiotic, right? So in, we were talking no, about they don't, they don't do that anymore, Dad. Okay, well, this this goes back to like they did back because O'Neill's won, O'Neill won two left field goals. So in 2012, when McCutcheon won his, it was him, Cargo, mm-hmm. and Hayward. All right, that's right. Cargo had been yep. left. Yeah, but McCutcheon they had in right field. Oh, Bingo. who played center out of those? Um, Hayward probably. Well, I mean, they they just list him as outfielders at the time. They don't even put center field next to him. That's so, so strange. I didn't even know that was a thing. In 2013, you were you hit Gomez, uh, Para. And Cargo again. Also Para. Yelich, Lagaris. Remember him Juan from Ligaris. the Mets? Yeah. Um, Hayward, Starling Marte, Hayward, days, Pollock. Hayward won a bunch. And then in, uh, Inciarte won it for three straight years. The fact, the greatest. Inciarte was in left, right? The while. greatest joke of a gold glove of all time happened in 2017 when Marcelo Zuna won one. Yep. By the way, on an absolute terror. <laughs> Didn't it seem like Marcelo Zuna? I want to talk about this for one second, then we can get out of here. Didn't it seem like Marcelo Zuna when he had all those, you know, off the field problems pop up a couple years ago? Did it? And he had a really bad year on top of that. It was like, okay, it's the end of Ozuna. Forty homers last year. I know and he has like a sixteen game hitting streak with like six or seven homers already this year. Yep. Did you see his homer yeah. hit against Tanner Scott? Killed my. I did not. Homer, by the way, I did not. They were down two with two outs in the ninth. He had a three run homer. It's we, like we don't. We next week guys Braves, did that. Can you can I can I ask you a question? How do the Braves get these people like Marcelo Zuna and Orlando Arcia to have great offensive stretches? But the Cardinals can't get Jordan Walker, the six foot seven behemoth that's supposed to be a star. Why can't he do it? Maybe we should care. know that. Maybe we should know that batting coach's name in Atlanta. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, yeah, can we get him over here? What do we have to pay him? <laughs> also, we didn't bring it up. Who Bill is it? Asking, I gotta look that up. That's Bill DeWitt's asking for five hundred million dollars of public funds to, for renovations. Whoa, 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 what? You didn't see that? Bill DeWitt's asking I for $500 did. million dollars of tax money for renovations to Bush 3. Give me your thoughts on that. My thoughts are what the Kansas City Royals did. So let's start here. Their bill did not pass. So let's start with that. It was then when the Chiefs had like a combined thing, and it did not pass. But what they did was incredibly smart. I thought they signed Lugo, Waka, a couple other people, and then extended Bobby Wood Jr. for like 12 years or whatever it was. And it was obvious they were trying to push, hey, we're going to invest in this team if you invest in us, right? That's just a smart business way to do it. It failed, but it made sense to me that they were doing that. If you're Bill DeWitt and you say, I'm going to ask for $500 million in renovations, maybe don't only sign two really old pitchers in Sonny Craig. <laughs> you know, I was just talking about Lance Lynn's been great, fine. But I think it would have been incredibly smart for this to be an offseason where he just does something out of character and sign, you know, maybe it's just as simple as signing Montgomery when no one thought you were doing anything else, you know, and just proving you're going to invest in it. But for me, the way that these votings have been going lately with people turning down the majority of the time public funding for major league stadiums and renovations – I think people have just stopped having any sort of sympathy for billionaires. And they're like, you just pay for it. And I, I agree. It. That makes sense to me. I would turn it down I, too. With the taxes the way they are now, I completely get it. And with I'm the also, way the ballpark village is like making him yes. how much extra money? Like pay the renovations yep. with that money then. And the parking garages and everything yeah, else. And, and I get it why he's asking for it because I, I would too if I was a billionaire, right? Because what well, if you get it? But I have a hard time seeing that pass. Last thing I got, shout out to Jackson Holiday for his first major league hit, by the way. Really scuffling to start, to start yeah. his career. Um, look, yeah. Antony, I mean, he's 20. He, he looks every bit of 17. He, he does. He's a uh, did you Hold thing. on. Did you know he was married? Yeah. Got married this fall season. Found that out the other day. Did not he's know He's an that. Oklahoma boy. They get married early. Um, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Zach Bryan did not, evidently, and there's some things he going did, on there. He that did, maybe, he got well, that is true. Well, well, we do not want that to happen to Jackson. I don't, and I don't think it will. Jackson seems like an upstanding fellow. but um, Unlike Zach Bryan. Don't ever, first off, ever in my presence do that again. I'm, I'm that okay. I hate that you just did that to me. What were, what were they saying? Oh, Jackson, when he puts on the muscle and start, and like, I don't want to like insult him, but when he starts to look like a, a grown man, like it looks like he's when he gets built and he looks bigger, uh, my god, he's gonna be so good. Yes, it's the amount of exit velocity that guy generates right now with his little 20 year old body. I mean, he's gonna be a, such a tank for so long, yeah. And Gunner, did you see that commercial with Kyle Ripken and Gunnar Henderson? That was awesome, awesome. I said awesome. that to you. He's like, your yeah. office is up there now. That was great. Yeah, fantastic. Everything Cal touches gold to me, so I'm all right. Gunnar Harrison, stud. Yes, stud. So it's Colin Cowser. Than... What's his Cowser. name? Cowser. There it is. Colin, <laughs> Colton Cowser. Um, it's Colton Cowser and yeah. um, maybe another kid going off too. Kyle Stowers, is that who it is? Either way, Gunnar Henderson got a lot less hype than Jackson Holiday, And did we disconnect? What happened? You good? No, you you were doing something weird there. All right, sorry about that. If there was any connection issues there, we apologize. Um, we are going to go ahead and wrap it up and get out of here. So, first of all, head down to the ballpark. If you're in this, in the. All right, everybody, enjoy the Cardinals this weekend. Go see a few games. We will talk to you soon. Go Cards.